uh, at this medieval ruin in the uh, the grounds of the Glastonbury Abbey. And this over here is the what was the Abbot's Kitchen it was called. We were just in there for a little presentation. And there's about 36 acres of parkland here. But that tower on the other side is the is a part of another uh, church steeple, a, a medieval tower. Uh, but this is the ruins of the abbey. And the story here is that this whole long building of the abbey was built up in medieval times around an original church called the Waddle Church, which was created in honor of Mary. So the, the beginning was a goddess church, and then that was taken over by the monastic uh, patriarchy of Catholicism. And Initially, the uh, the abbey was built around it, and then, over time, I guess the uh, the feminine aspects were uh, eliminated. And uh, then they got a photograph on the other side, actually here, of the kitchen. They've got, they've got the original feminine stone called the omphalos that. Uh, this is a sort of yoni stone, classic goddess stone, and relegated out to back on the other side of the building with <laughs> no uh, no acknowledgement. So there, Linda's Linda's taking a picture of me as I'm taking one of her. <laughs> so Sanji was just saying, this is this is the corner of. The Great Hall. This would have been the Great Hall. That's just the corner, and it's all around here. And uh -huh. this is where the abbot would have feasted with the king if the king oh, came down with all his courtiers. So all of all of those buildings are destroyed. Yes, and it's just marked out on the ground. Oh, I see. So these are just the the, the markings of where, where the corner would have been. Uh -huh. huh. Interesting. And the stones were then looted off and made. Yes, and all the surrounding houses were built. This was like the local quarry. If you wanted some stones, this is where you came. <laughs> uh, so there's a little bit of abbey in every garden around here. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. And the these buildings we're estimating were somewhere around 11th or 12th century. Something like I think so. Yes. Yeah, somewhere around there. Mm hmm. So we can go in a little bit closer here. All of these centuries and millennia of people trying to work it out, <laughs> dedicating themselves so profoundly. We're just hearing this uh, presentation in the uh, abbot's kitchen there of how the monks would be getting up at 1.30 in the morning in the summers, get to sleep in until 2 a.m. in the winter, <laughs> dedicating their lives to trying to find the divine. So this is site of the ancient graveyard where in 1191 the monks dug to find the tombs of Arthur and Guinevere, the legendary Arthur and Guinevere, and this is in the uh, parkland near the ruins of the abbey. And uh, apparently at some point later they did find them, or so, so legend had it. And as uh, Sanji was just pointing out, that uh, definitely increased the number of pilgrims who were interested in coming here. That connection with the, 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 the very legendary uh, hero and heroine of Camelot. 
So this unmarked is uh, the it's called the Om Omphalo stone or something like that. <clears throat> Have to look it up in the book. And it's uh, it's the the original one. one uh, I'm sorry. It's one. It's a a stone that was found at some point in the history of this whole land here that uh, uh, was considered to be a, a goddess image, and this is at the back of the uh, the abbot's kitchen. It's called, and uh, it, it was treated with more reverence back in the early goddess epoch of. Or, or the, the the time when the the feminine was more fully integrated into the worship here, and then eventually they they, they just moved it back here, and it has no there's no indicator, no uh, plaque or anything that indicates what it is. The top part here I read about that depression there. Uh, was to hold a cross that had been uh, erected in it, uh, a symbol of the domination of Christianity over the earlier uh, goddess religion. Uh, and we can draw all kinds of inferences from <clears throat> the masculine and feminine uh, imagery there. Underneath the stone actually is the original yoni or female genital uh, depression or uh, slight uh, crevice in the stone that when it was discovered prompted its recognition and its original use. So this is again back behind the... So I'm just walking around and here we are back in the front. This is all part of the lore of Glastonbury. So here in the yard of the abbey, <clears throat> toward the upper end of town, I think the eastern, site of King Arthur's tomb in the year 1191, the bodies of King Arthur and his queen Guinevere were said to have been found on the south side of the Lady Chapel. So I guess this is south then. On the 19th of April, 1278, their remains were removed in the presence of then King Edward I and Queen Eleanor of England to a black marble tomb on this site. This tomb survived until the dissolution of the abbey at the hands of King Henry VIII in 1539. So, this is the, the site here. The, there's the plaque, and here's the site. And we're at the other end of the area here. And here comes Linda. <laughs> 